good morning and it's a privilege to be at this uh, very prestigious uh, international event this international relations conference the fourth uh, in the in row and i had attended uh, a similar you know a conference 2 years ago and uh, the very high quality of the deliberations and the interaction with students uh, is a, is a privilege to be here again uh, you know the theme for this this year uh, india and the indian ocean sustainability security and development and uh, the specific assignment given to me by my uh, distinguished uh, colleague uh, ms nancy karigitu is about the financing part of it so i'll begin by uh, mentioning a few words about the export import bank of india which is a statutory corporation that was set up in 1982 by an act of the indian parliament and its purpose is to finance facilitate and promote india's international trade so since its inception the bank has been supporting uh, indian companies indian businesses to go global and when we talk about Uh, relating with the with the world with the globe you know then definitely our large coastline 7500 kilometers of coastline and with uh, with the indian ocean uh, uh, being there you know so the the strategic importance uh, for india's trading relations from times immemorial has been through the sea route so the exim bank has been engaged with uh, with its uh, neighboring countries and at the behest of the government of india over the last 10 years under a program called the uh, india economic development uh, assistance scheme uh, we uh, extend what is called the lines of credit to our neighboring to our friendly countries and uh, over these last 10 years more than 28 billion dollars of uh, of lines of credit have been extended to about 70 countries now these countries uh, borrow the money uh, on very concessional terms and uh, india extends uh, very concessional terms which are uh, over a period of 20 years 25 years and the development cooperation is for agriculture projects for uh, for transmission and electricity transmission generation projects for supporting the purchase of ships uh, and for for developing industries uh, so for for any kind of development uh, project these countries can borrow uh, and it is not only a question of making resources available but more an exchange of technology of appropriate technology best practices because india itself is going through the same challenges of an emerging economy so the south south cooperation has really been strengthened over the last 10 12 years and i'm very happy to report that as we speak you know even in kenya madam in your country uh, we have uh, many projects uh, up and running uh, the the uh, the recent visit of our honorable prime minister uh, also saw uh, indian government extending 30 million dollars for a, a textile unit in in kenya which was uh, which needed upgradation and uh, a very good company called the lakshmi uh, machine works lmw they make some of the best textile equipment they will be uh, renovating this whole factory uh, by, and it will cost 30 million dollars uh, similarly for the smes in kenya another 15 million dollars is being extended and that will be uh, for nearly 25 years for power transmission in kenya uh, 65 million dollars uh, was extended and so so these are the so i could you know you could come to exim bank's website and all the details are there of the various projects in the uh, in the iur rim countries where uh, uh, india is is supporting but it's not a question only of the money as i mentioned it's about the exchange of people the exchange of technology and building people to people relation which is the bedrock of uh, sustainable development so it's it's when the private sector starts engaging with each other and and developing uh, a trade uh, tr trade links that uh, the objective is really served uh, we we are aware that the future 
of the of uh, of globalization uh, appears to be uh, threatened if you see global trade has slipped over the last uh, 5 years and now it is at a low so so the growth in in trade global trade is only about 1.7% this year but still uh, india as as one of the uh, outliers is 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 the best performing in uh, its growth figures we are aware 7.5% gdp growth is something stupendous and with the transformation underway and with the make in india and the other uh, sectoral reforms i think we are most perfectly placed at this point in time to go towards a coastal development strategy so for far too long india's manufacturing was away from the coasts and we were not able to unleash the potential we could by exporting from our coastal manufacturing territories so now if you see there is a very deliberate shift in the strategy to reduce the transportation costs and the other hurdles which are there within within the country so to move more and more of the manufacturing closer to the coasts the sagarmala project you would have heard about i'm sure over the over the period of you know the, there would be more intense discussions on how the uh, the trade within india the trade with our neighbors with the bimstech countries with the ior rim countries will will really uh, trigger uh, the this will become the engine of growth uh, in the years to come so the coastal shipping uh, the international shipping has been hurt it appears because of this crash in global trade a lot of ship and shipping companies are facing stress but within the coastal areas of india i think there is a lot of activity new ports are coming up we are encouraging our our other neighbors like madam was mentioning about the mombasa port uh, you know nearly 15 african countries are serviced through the mombasa port and uh, i'm sure if there is a proposal to strengthen india and mombasa trade uh, port relationship madam i'm sure there can be opportunities to examine and explore how indian and kenyan companies can collaborate to strengthen uh, the development of the mombasa port uh, we have mr shrivastava a very eminent diplomat uh, sitting in the audience and he very uh, ably led the development of the chabahar port in iran and i'm very happy that exim bank is supporting the development of the chabahar port which is only 500 kilometers from from our port ports in gujarat so that opens up a whole uh, opportunity for indian businessmen to export not only to iran but onwards to afghanistan and through central asia uh, right up to up to russia and into europe so these uh, and, and and we have uh, mr uh, uh, merotra from rights chairman rights he might also mention about how we are also looking at developing the chabahar zahedan railway track and on to mashhad so so it will be the multimodal so so the inter integrated uh, trade corridors which shipping as well as railways opens up a huge potential for this part of of the world the south asian economies to integrate with africa with uh, south asia uh, with, with sri lanka and our other friendly neighbors so the uh, trade potential is huge we are more than 60% of humanity uh, in this part of the world and the global shipping lines if you see the trade the, the where the oil is moving the indian ocean has got a pole position and uh, all uh, all opportunities to to develop uh, more relations with the maritime uh, neighbors uh, are there we we look forward to uh, 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 more opportunities in developing the fisheries the aquaculture sector the uh, uh, exploration of petroleum in 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 and around uh, in the indian ocean again is a large reservoir unexplored uh, for for oil and uh, the way forward is really to uh, ensure that safety security uh, is is available so that navigation uh, in these territories for uh, commercial shipping is not affected and we can harness the natural resources while uh, strengthening the traditional links india has had with our neighbors in africa in south asia 
So the financing is available, the political leadership uh, is there, technology is, is there to, uh, to ex uh, exchange best practices. For example, the M-Pesa movement in Kenya in no small measure is an inspiration even for, for India as we move into the digital, digital less cash uh, model. So I think the South-South cooperation is the dominant theme and it's something that we all are extremely proud of and committed to. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the panel, I'm sure, will get an opportunity to engage with the students rather than it be only a monologue. And like Madam said, we have to be the, the athletes and do the sprint instead of the marathon. So in the interest of that, I will also now uh, rest. And uh, once again, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here this morning.